this video, we're going to be looking at how to create graffiti on a wall or basically the application of decals and the creation of a decal to put on a wall. You can see on the screen at the moment, uh, the image will be working towards. This is where we started from, a nice displaced uh, old wall texture. Um, and this is where we're going to be going. So let's have a look at how we're going to get started. I just have a simple cube on the screen with the texture applied. Let's go ahead and look at the texture itself. So to create the decal, we need to create a new layer. So there's the uh, add layer button. And you'll see on the screen immediately that it's refreshed and it's showing the, the flat gray of the wall of the new layer. Sorry. So instead of procedural colors, we're going to look at a mapped picture. Viewer's already gone ahead and carried forward the image from previously, i.e. The, the wall texture. But we're going to need a, a decal. Now, a decal needs to be a PNG or a TIFF, something with transparency. If you bring in a JPEG or a bitmap, say, for instance, an image such as this, you'll end up with just a, a poster, as it were. It'll be a, a flat image. Uh, what we want is just a PNG. So if I go ahead and import this PNG, View is going to ask, the picture contains alpha information. Would you like to use it as material transparency? Yes, we would. And you'll see the decal has been applied, but it's a repeating image. That's no good to us. What we need to do is we need to make it just appear once on our wall. So you can see it's down here, but we're going to correct that momentarily. But I can also see the proportions already are incorrect. So I'm just going to increase the size of the image in the X axis. And we're going to right click on the image and we're going to edit that function. Once we edit that function, which is the uh, projected texture, You'll see it's connected via the color and the alpha channel. The alpha channel is the is the part which is looking for the transparency in the image. But we also have access to this button, which is the show manipulation gizmo. So if I click on that, we get a, a little box that pops up showing our cube. And you'll see that our decal is down here. Now the white around the edge is the full extent of the PNG. I could have cropped it, but I'm lazy. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and move it up into the center of the screen. And you can see our decal has appeared. OK. OK. Let's just do a quick test render and see how that looks. So at the moment, it's a little bit small. Anybody with a spray can who can achieve that level of, of, of accuracy at that scale is a better man than I am. So obviously that texture needs to be increased in scale so let's just make that let's say 1.5 now you'll see by changing the scale our decal has moved a little bit that's no big deal we'll just go back to edit the function show manipulation gizmo rotate so we can see what we're working with and we can move it back down into the center of the image you do have the option at this stage to, to rotate uh, the image. You can either do that by putting in your angle manually, or we can move the cursor until we get the, the rotate button, and we can rotate it. In this particular image, I don't think rotation is necessary because we have some nice clouds uh, which seem to indicate that this image should be horizontal to me. So let's click OK. We're quite happy with the texture at the moment, so we'll click OK because we're just going to do another quick sample image to make sure it's a better scale. I'm quite happy with that for these purposes. There is a There are a couple of problems here that need to be spoken about. First of all, uh, you'll see at the bottom of the screen that I have shown the location from which I borrowed and, and have used this image. Um, it's important that if we use any sourced images from the internet that we credit where we get these images from. Um, 
it helps serve with copyright etc and certainly if you're going to use it for a commercial purpose you need to have asked for permission or ensure that it's a royalty free uh, image um, the second thing we need to talk about is the fact that this image is completely flat it almost looks like a sign sitting on the surface so we need to address that let's have a look at the material again we need to look at the bumps for this material. It has no bump map. I haven't applied any bumpiness. But down here we have the option to add to underlying layer bumps. So at the moment it's replacing the bumpiness of the surface. I'm going to add it 100% to the bumpiness of the surface and we'll do a render. So you can see already in the preview that the bump was coming through. Now you can see the bump completely. So that is now applied to the surface almost. Just going to make a couple more changes because if you remember in our original image, the, uh, the image was worn away. This is old graffiti. So I'm just going to quickly add to our texture by looking at the transparency of the texture. So we have the alpha information which deals with transparency, but we also have a secondary option which is transparency. And I'm just going to drop a grainy fractal in there and connect it through to transparency, altitude, that's good. And let's render now and see what we've got. And again, already in the preview, you can see that parts of the paint have been worn away, they've been removed, it's looking old, it's looking faded. That's exactly the kind of effect that we want. But one more tweak again, I really don't think that that's big enough. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to make this twice as big. That, of course, necess necessitates going back to the projected texture, the manipulation gizmo, and just relocating that closer to the center of our wall. Okay. OK, and let's do one last render. So I hope you found this useful. You can see that this is a fairly quick and easy way. You can, you can add other layers of graffiti, so you can build up graffiti over time. You can also see that uh, that replace the bump or add to the bump also enables the application of posters, etc. So as I say, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on social media and on YouTube for further tips and tricks videos from Ian Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.